Welcome back. Fair skies at 82 degrees. Winds southeast at 7 miles per hour. Humidity at 31% and the barometric pressure at 29.92 and falling. The area conditions. Hymera, fair skies at 80 degrees. Candleburg, fair skies at 75. Mount Olympus, mostly cloudy at 81. And Calhoun, Illinois at fair at 82. The Atlantic Coast is experiencing temperatures from the 50s to the 80s, Caribou, Maine at 53, and Miami, Florida at 87. Into the Midwest and the Plains region, temperatures are in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, Lincoln, Nebraska at 58. The West is experiencing temperatures in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, Shelby, Montana at 74, and Phoenix, Arizona at 76. There are a few rain showers in parts of Washington, Idaho, and Oregon. A trough of low pressure is bringing some scattered rain showers to Colorado and Nebraska. Coming back to the East Coast, you will see that there are some scattered rain showers in parts of Virginia and North Carolina. As you move more inland, you will see that there are some scattered showers in Georgia and Tennessee. Coming back home, this high pressure system continues to do do not dominate. However, clouds have moved in and expecting a chance of rain finally in the forecast. Tonight, we will experience partly cloudy skies, southeast wind 5 to 10 miles per hour, a low 52. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, becoming partly sunny, 30% chance of late afternoon showers and storms, high of 75. Tomorrow night, occasional rain showers, possible thunderstorms, southeast wind 5 to 10 miles per hour, a low of 56. For Thursday, showers and storms likely, high of 71 and a low of 51. For Friday, sunny, little cooler with a high of 67 and a low of 47. And for Saturday, sunny skies, high of 69 and a low of 51. So at least we don't expect the rain to hang around too long, Evan. I'm definitely holding you to that. Thanks, Ethan. The pairings for the girls' high school volleyball sectionals have been released. Jesse Gwynn is here now with the details. Jesse? That's right, Evan. And all, out of all of the county schools, Vincennes Lincoln has the easiest route to next week's sectional championship. I'll tell you all about it when News Center 22 returns. Coming up this week on WVUP's 22 Magazine, Dave Parman is an Associate Professor of Music at Vincennes University. He'll be discussing what opportunities students can explore in the VU Music Program. Then in our second segment, Steve Gray and Vicki Puffer with Old Town Players will join me to talk about their upcoming season. That's the next time on 22 Magazine, Saturday night at 7.30 on WVUT-TV. I'm Roy Underhill. As Joseph Moxon said, dovetail, schmubtail. It's panel and frame where you earn your biscuits. But it's the panels that get the glory. And the frame, frames get no respect. The panels are right in the center of everything. You raise them with one big, sexy plane. But working on the frame, most people think that's a pain. But we're changing that as frames come first next time here in the Woodwright Shop. Volleyball teams are gearing up for the postseason. Good evening, everyone. For WVUT Sports, I'm Jesse Gwynn. The IHSAA announced the pairings last night for the girls' high school volleyball tournament, which begins next week, at the Class 3A Jasper sectional. Vincennes Lincoln drew the bye game and will play Pike Central in a semifinal matchup. Washington will take on Mitchell, while Jasper plays Heritage Hills in the opening round. The winners will meet in other semifinal match. The South Knox and North Knox will compete in the Class 2A sectional at Eastern Green. The opening night match pits 10th ranked Sullivan against Bloomfield. The winner advances to play North Central. In other first round matchups, South Knox takes on Linton and North Knox plays third ranked Eastern Green. At Lagodi, the first game features Vincennes Reve versus Shoals, followed by top ranked Bar Reeve taking on Washington Catholic. 
in the other semifinal, third-ranked third Ligoti plays North Davies. On the courts last night, Vincennes Lincoln lost to Linton in three games, 15-25, 19-25, 23-25. Taylor Nash had 15 points, 5 kills, and 11 digs. Anissa Hatton finished with 15 digs, and Kristen Seeger had 5 kills and 2 stuffed blocks. The Lady Alices dropped to 19-11 and 11 on the season. Elsewhere, the Vincennes Reve volleyball team defeated Shoals 25-20, 25-18, 25-18. South Knox beat Pike Central 25-16, 25-17, 18-25-25-17. Anyone with plans to go to an NBA game next month will have to rethink. The regular season will not start on time after players and owners failed to reach an agreement on a new labor deal. Tommy Andres has more on the story. We remain really very, very far apart on virtually all issues. It's not looking good for basketball fans. Players and owners met yesterday in New York, but hours worth of talks on a labor deal only ended in deadlock and the decision to cancel the first two weeks of the regular season. We now know where we are and where the players are. We don't have to guess about it. And uh, we part on good terms with the negotiators. We just have a gulf that separates us. The head of the NBA Players Association says the entire season could be in jeopardy for basketball fans. We're going to do the responsible thing and, and try our best to, to bring them basketball as soon as we possibly can. The two sides have been negotiating over salary caps and splitting revenue. The lockout began in July. With no deal in sight, there's no telling when it will end. I'd like to think that uh, we'll be able to work something out, but with each passing day, I think, uh, you know, you face the prospect of more games lost. I'm Tommy Andres reporting. Commissioner David Stern says the canceled games will affect league revenue and impact future negotiations. Led by their all-star slugger, Albert Pujols, and the St. Louis Cardinals took care of the Milwaukee Brewers 12-3 in Game 2 of the National League Championship Series. Pujols went four for five and went with a two-run home run off Brewers starter Sean Markham. Five runs batted in and three runs scored. David Fries added a solo homer with two RBIs, while Nick Punto also drove in two runs. Pujols was feeling a lot better about his effort, especially after a rough outing Sunday night. This game, this game is going to rise you high and at the same time it's going to bring you down. And, uh, the things that you need to do myself uh, as a player, I've been in those situations before. Uh, I just let the game come to you, and, uh, you know, the guys uh, got on base for me, and I'm glad that I came through to help our ball club to win. The series now shifts to St. Louis, where Cardinals ace Chris Carpenter faces Brewers right-hander Giovanna Gallardo in Game 3 on Wednesday night. Game two of the American League Championship Series between the Detroit Tigers and the Texas Rangers went extra innings, but it was well worth the wait for Rangers fans as Nelson Cruz hit a walk-off grand slam in the bottom of the 11th to win it for the Texas 7-3. Nelson's home run was the first ever game-ending grand slam in postseason history. The Rangers now lead the, the series 2-0 with game three coming up in Detroit this evening. The resurgent Detroit Lions continued their amazing start to the season by beating the Chicago Bears 24-13. Lions quarterback Matthew Stafford threw for two touchdowns, including one to Calvin Johnson, who now has an NFL record nine touchdown catches in the first five games of the season. The Bears looked unnerved at times by the ruckus crowd as the offense committed six false start penalties in the first half. Um, the crowd noise, um, you know, there's a lot of things that happen. Uh, but at the end of the day, it can't happen. You know, we practice that. We bring speakers out on our field. Uh, this isn't anything new to us. We played in loud situations before. The Lions are 5-0 and for the first time since 1956. The Bears dropped to 2-3 and on the season. It's time now for our play of the day. It comes courtesy of Monday's Tigers-Rangers games. Let's head out to Arlington Stadium where the bases are loaded for the Rangers' Nelson Cruz. He takes on the Tigers' Ryan Perry deep to the left and gone for the game-ending Grand Slam. It's the first walk-off Grand Slam home run in Major League Baseball playoff history. And of course, it enabled the Rangers to win the game, Evan, and take two games to zero lead against the Tigers. That was a pretty good hit.
Thanks, Jesse. Coming up next, as the Occupy Wall Street movement continues in New York, a modified form of communication is now in the spotlight. We'll explain when we return. Stay with us. Next time on Nature. The most surprising thing about crows has been their ability to recognize particular faces. And remember the deeds we've done to them, be they good or bad, for a long period of time. You walk outside now with a whole nother perspective. They're watching you and learning from you. Vincennes University is unbelievable because we are about making sure our students succeed academically, socially, personally, and I think that we go above and beyond to make sure that happens. BU is unbelievable because of the people, and, and that's staff, students, faculty, and all of us in it together. It's a very encouraging place, a place of possibilities, and that's unbelievable. Protesters occupying Wall Street are occupying themselves by wiggling their fingers. And we don't mean the finger angry people usually raise. Turns out the demonstrators have a whole new set of hand signals. Jeannie Most deciphers them. They are the concert pianists of protesters, flutter fingers, playing upon thin air, but saying what? On the whole day. This is silent applause, the sign of approval. On the other hand, this, this, to show that we don't like what we hear. To show that we don't like what we hear. And if you're wondering why the Occupy Wall Street protesters keep repeating themselves, we use this human mic. We use this human mic. It's because they aren't allowed to use amplifying equipment, so... We amplify each other's voices! We amplify each other's voices! And you constantly hear them saying... Mic check! Mic check! Mic check! It warms my heart! It warms my heart! To see all of you here! As Michael Moore noted, the system... Saves on electricity. But what does silent applause save on? Time spent waiting for the crowd to settle back down so everyone can hear. And guess who else does this same signal? It's used by the deaf to signify applause in American Sign Language, other protester hand signals. Point of process. To signify a point of order at protester assemblies. Wrap it up. Though not everyone is up to speed on the proper direction. Some of the signals could be misinterpreted. When Michael Moore suggested those who brought down the economy should be in handcuffs, in handcuffs. he inadvertently used the protesters' most severe hand signal. It's a block, which means that you have some moral or ethical disagreement. Not quite as confusing as the conflicting hand signals sent to a batter in a league of their own. Hey, who's the damn manager? Protesters take pride in not having a manager. The police have their own signals. Folks, please keep walking this way. And one officer ended up on Facebook giving that age-old symbol. Please. Though on a police blog, someone suggested, maybe the cop is putting in his order for coffee. Yeah, two sugars. Actually, the protesters' hand signals remind us of the ones used by the financial markets they're protesting. <laughs> we do this. We do this. Genimos. Genimos. CNN. CNN. New York. And that's all for this evening. For Ethan Quarterman and Jesse Gwynn, I'm Evan Nunn. Good night. This is WVUT Vincennes. Welcome to the program tonight. A look at the Metropolitan Opera. So, why is it tough? Well, it's it's uh, it's really very difficult. It's, yeah. It has a huge uh, range, yes. and it has to have uh, plenty of emotions. And you cannot just sing it like a, uh, like a bel canto. It is bel canto, it is but, bel canto yeah. but it it has so much passion, so much yeah, so much emotions, and you have to 
act a lot because without that, uh, it's, uh, it's not complete. And a conversation with the great golfer from South Africa, Gary Player. How can somebody like myself, a small person, say, I did it? I never did.